Hello everyone, welcome to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. My name is Davine and today I'm going to be talking about how I'm introducing Shakespeare to my four children ages 9, 10, 11, and 13. So my kids would technically be considered third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade and I thought it was a good time to introduce Shakespeare to them. I would consider our homeschool a literature-based, Charlotte Mason-inspired homeschool. That's why I chose to introduce my children to Shakespeare at this pretty young age. So some of you expressed interest in knowing how I'm introducing Shakespeare to my children. So I wanted to show you the resources that I'm using and talk through the process that I've used to introduce this topic to my kids. So I started Shakespeare for our third term of the school year. So kind of towards the end of the year, the last 12 weeks of school. And this is what I'm doing for introducing Shakespeare to them. So I would say actually halfway through the last term, I started with this book here, The Usborn Complete Shakespeare. And I did not read the whole book. I only read the play that I was planning with my kids. So we are doing A Midsummer Night's Dream. And so that was actually the first one in this book. So they have quite a few stories in this book. If you wanna take a look at the content right there, they have a lot of stories and A Midsummer Night's Dream is the first one. They have a page at the very beginning of each book and it shows all the characters and talks about who they are. So this has been super helpful. So we first went through and we read about all the characters. So we kind of knew who the important characters were in the story. Then we read, we read the story. So they are not super long. I would say actually quite short, very short summary. So basically Midsummer Night's Dream, 14 pages to talk about that story. So we first read this so that my kids kind of knew the story and the basic outline of the story. So then what I did was I went on to Amazon and I was looking for the script. And I have heard in the past about this book here, No Fear Shakespeare. And so I picked this one up. And basically this one, first of all, they start also with a summary of the characters, which is very nice. We have the summary of the characters. So it talks about all the main characters in the first few pages. So if you're ever wondering who is who, it talks about all the main characters. So we didn't actually do that. We use that more as a reference now because when I need to talk about the main characters, I just pull out this book and we talk about the main characters. But if there's a smaller character that we're not sure of, we can check in the beginning of this book. And now what they do in No Fear Shakespeare is on one side, they have the actual, the actual words from the play. And on the other side, they have kind of a modern day translation of what's happening. So if you're ever wondering what it means on this side, you can always check on this side. So we are generally using it for the actual words because I also went and I think I got this. Oh, I got this on thrift books. So if you would like a link to thrift books, you've never used them before, check below. I have a $5 off if it's your first time to sign up for rewards and I get $5 as well for a new book. But I went on thrift books and I found this audiobook or audio presentation of the play. And so the characters in the play, there's actual characters who are saying the words. So it does have different people saying the different parts. And so what we're doing is we are listening to the audiobook and each kid has their own copy of this. So I purchased five copies, one for myself and one for each of my kids so that we could go through and read along as they are presenting it in the audiobook. Now I will say that for kids my kids ages, so 9, 10, 11, 13, it is not easy for them to understand what is happening. I do pause probably every page or every two pages to just kind of give a summary of what's happening but it certainly helps that we have read the story ahead of time so they know the basic story. 
Um, there's a lot of words and as they do in plays, they have monologues and they talk and talk and talk about the same thing for what seems like a long time. However, my kids haven't complained about doing Shakespeare at the very beginning. They were very excited about doing it. So we'll see as we keep going. We're about, I'd say a third of the way through. We'll see how things go. It can be quite a lot, but I think it's a great way to expose them to Shakespeare. So that is what we're generally working on. Now, now I've gotten out my No Fear Shakespeare. We're just starting to go through the script. And so each kid is getting their own book and we are reviewing the characters. We did read the story format of it in our Us Born Complete Shakespeare book. So they know the characters and we've heard the story. I just turned the audio on and we are going to listen to the audiobook while it reads to us. So my kids actually really enjoyed this and they're asking for when we're going to do Shakespeare again. So I just stop every once in a while and kind of explain what's happening just so that they know what's happening in the story. Now, I also put in my morning basket two other resources just to get a better understanding of Shakespeare and the times that he was writing the plays. And so I picked up this book here, Who Was Shakespeare? So if you're a fan of Who Was books, that's a good one to pick up. Um, I have really enjoyed learning about Shakespeare's life and kind of understanding how he wrote his plays and what it was like back in the time when he was writing the plays. So that has been really interesting to me. And then I got this one from the library, Will's Words. And this one was recommended to me by a friend of mine from a college and she knew that we were doing Shakespeare so she mentioned this book. So what this book does is it talks about all the words that we have gotten because of Shakespeare. I hope the glare is not too bad. But they will basically on one side, they will tell the story of Shakespeare and his time and they will use words that are famous now because of Shakespeare. And then on the other side, they will say, this is the phrase that came from Shakespeare's plays. This is how he used them, what play he used it in, what scene, what act, and just tells us why we have some of the phrases that we have in English. So for example, this one is, when it came to plays, people in London thought you couldn't have too much of a good thing. So too much of a good thing. It means more of something good may be bad. If you've ever eaten a whole bag of gummy worms at once, you already know what this means, where it comes from. As you like it, act two, scene one, a woman teases her boyfriend that if one boyfriend is good, 20 must be even better. Or is that too much of a good thing? All right, so basically on every spread, it is taking you through the story of Shakespeare and the times but adding in words that are famous because of Shakespeare and his plays. So that is a great supplement, I would say, if you're doing Shakespeare in your family. And finally, so for the last incentive for my children as we're going through Shakespeare, I've told them that once we've completed listening to the play and going through the play, I am going to purchase the streaming of the Globe Theater of a Midsummer's Night's Dream to watch with my children kind of at the end of our Shakespeare, I guess, unit. So they're excited about that and I'm excited about that. I really like plays, so I'm excited about seeing a Globe Theater play on our TV. So that is going to be the conclusion for this Shakespeare unit or learning about a Midsummer Night's Dream. So I'm wondering, have you done Shakespeare with your children? How old are your children? When did you start? How did it go? What did you do? What are some tips you can give me for the next time I do another Shakespeare play with my kids? I do anticipate doing perhaps one a year. I think one a year would be a nice balance for us. So if you have any tips or your favorite Shakespeare plays that we should study next, I would love to hear it in the comments. Just leave it in the comments below for me and for all the other people watching this video. So I just wanna let you know that I'm not sure if it's happening now or if it's coming up, but we have some really big videos coming up. We have some curriculum reveal 
collaborations coming up, me and a bunch of other homeschool moms. So we're going to be putting up a series of curriculum review videos. So our first one is going to be up May 17th on the Monday. It's going to be all of our family subject curriculum reveals. So I believe there are at least six moms who are signed up for that playlist collaboration. And every Monday after that, for four weeks in a row, we're going to be putting up videos about what we're using for. So first one is family subject. Second one is math. Third one is language arts. And the fourth one is all the electives. If you're interested in seeing what curriculum a bunch of homeschool moms are using, you'll want to click like on this video, subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you're notified when our next videos come up. I'm really excited about this collaboration and I can't wait to share with all of you my curriculum picks for next year. Thanks for coming today and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye everyone.